Lord, thank you very much. As we've been in here, we've been hearing from other parts of Scotland, from Bunnell, from Inverness, and if I'm going to leave places out, I apologise. Hundreds have been on the streets in those places. In Dundee and in Aberdeen, thousands have been on the streets in those places. And I'll tell you, in Edinburgh, over 10,000 have been on the streets. And in Glasgow, the police helicopter was saying 5,000. That's because he was going around in wee budgie circles. Now those demonstrations today were not led by people like me, they were led by people like you. I never ever before have so many public service workers and so many women taken action. And we know that today's strike is being led by women where 3.7 million women will be affected by these pensions cuts. But again on a day like today, you don't want to hear from me. You'd rather hear from George, the police civilian in Dundee, who with his colleagues walked out of a shift at midnight tonight. who's been working in outpatients for 27 years. She's going to be £597 worse off because of the 50% increase in her contributions. And she's going to be £1,300 worse off at the end of the day of what is taken out of a pension that she has a right to expect. And you would rather hear from Davida and the colleagues from security who left Caledonian Uni at midnight past. <laughs> you would rather hear from Carol, the nursery nurse, who broke her first exposure on television last night. to her pension, she was being robbed by the UK government. <laughs> well, if you've been standing here in this hall, you'll have seen some of the STUC placards coming up on the screen. That it's not just about us, it's about the Waynes. And one of the Waynes was telling me a story of the David Cameron visit in a primary school. He visited one of the classes. And they were in the middle of a discussion about uh, related to words and the meaning of words. And the teacher said to Cameron, would you like to leave the, uh, read, lead the lesson and uh, lead a discussion on what the word tragedy means? Now he boy stood up and offered a definition of tragedy. He said, if my best friend who lives on a farm Play in a field and a tractor runs over him and kills him, that would be a tragedy. And Cameron said, no, 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 that would be an accident. And a wee girl raised her hand and she said, if the school bus carrying 50 children drove over a cliff and everybody inside was killed, that would be a tragedy. And Cameron says, I'm afraid no, that's what we would call a great loss. And the room went silent and no other kids could come up with any kind of explanation and Cameron searched the room. Is there nobody here with another explanation of a tragedy? And finally at the back of the room one wee fella spoke up and he said in a quiet voice, if a plane carrying Mr. Clegg, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Osborne and yourself was struck by friendly fire and blown his smithereens. <laughs> That would be a tragedy. Fantastic, said Cameron. That's right, and why would it be a tragedy? And the wee fella says, well, 
It has to be a tragedy because it wouldn't be a great loss 